least the Phillies won this series yesterday, so I kind of think asking them to sweep this maybe was a little too much to ask for, but just because, okay, they haven't won a road series in a while, I think asking them to sweep a road series is probably too, a little too much to ask for there. So the Phillies lose this game by a score of 5-1 to one to the Washington Nationals, and like I said, they won this series already, and maybe you could have thought going into this game it would have been more easier because you had Patrick Corbin on the mound for the Nats, and he's been struggling a lot this year. He has an ERA almost near eight and he just really hasn't been good walking a lot of people giving up a lot of home runs you have Zach Eflin on the mound for the Phillies been a really consistent pitcher for us this year really solid and it kind of felt like the opposite for a little bit there definitely did Zach Eflin in that first inning really struggled allowed four runs two absolute bombs to Schwarber and Bell and Patrick Corbin the entire day just dealt he dealt, and it also kind of didn't feel like he was doing anything fantastic either. He was just doing what normal pitchers do. You attack the strike zone first, and then you make the pitcher, then you make the hitters uncomfortable the next so many pitches. You pat, you pound the first pitch with fastballs. You throw your off-speed pitches to get the hitters to chase. Because going into this game, I could understand the Phillies' game plan is be patient. And Corbin, he's a guy that tends to walk people a lot this year. So be patient and let him make him his mistakes because you're most likely going to walk a lot this game. And I guess Corbin took advantage of that. He got the Phillies hitters uncomfortable. He got them behind in the counts. And he forced them to swing the bats, pounding those first pitch fastballs and then using those sliders, those change-ups, off-speed type of pitches to get him to swing and miss. And that's, you got to give credit where credit is due to Patrick Corbin, but the Phillies offense just dead, just dead. And that's the one thing I don't like finishing off a series like this. Like, yeah, Zach Eflin, he didn't pitch the best game, but I can't be as annoyed because he's been more consistent than not this year. So I'm more confident Zach Eflin can rebound into his next start and pitch a very solid game. And honestly, after that first inning, he settled down a lot. It was like, Many of the other starts from guys like Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola a lot this year, where they would have that sluggish first inning, they would allow a couple of runs, and they would really settle in the later part of the ball game. And this was this type of ball game for Zach Eflin. He allowed those first four runs, but he also struck out nine today. So eh, I, the Phillies' bats really didn't give Zach Eflin anything to work with, even though they got the early one nothing lead. And the Phillies, for some reason, love to score in the first inning, and they just don't like to score in the rest of the ball game. But... They get the one nothing lead, and then Zach Eflin, maybe there was a little problems with the defensive setup too because there was one hit maybe that shouldn't have gone by the shortstop, and maybe you would have got out of that situation, maybe not even allowing maybe at least one of those home runs to make it a 4-1 lead. Instead, maybe it'll be a 2-1 lead, but you never know. It is what it is at that point, but the offense really just didn't give Zach Eflin any type of help in this ball game besides that one run in the first inning really nothing and the Phillies get that run because Andrew McCutcheon leads off the game with a double Bryce Harper gets on and then you manage to well Bryce Harper actually gets on with a ground ball to second base moves Kutch over to third but Trey Turner can't get the ball out of his glove to throw Harper out so you got a first and third situation for Reese Hoskins a terrible at bat by Reese swings at all three pitches and eh, wasn't a good at bat by Reese Hoskins and then a little weird situation during the Alec Bohm at bat. Corbin tries to pick off Bryce Harper, and it looks like he does have him in a rundown situation. But here comes Andrew McCutcheon out of nowhere, trying to steal home base. And Josh Bell with this terrible throw to home, way high. And it allows Andrew McCutcheon to get in there safely without having to worry about the tag on the replay. It did look a lot closer than it actually did, but there was no replay involved there or review, as I should say to try and overturn the call. So the Phillies go one nothing, but Alec Bohm ends up striking out as well, so you can't drive in Harper from second base. So you go into that bottom of the first inning up one nothing, and then it gets a little iffy for Zach Eflin. He does get Trey Turner to get the first out of the ball game. Josh Harrison battles his at-bat, gets a single. Maybe there's a little bit of a shift involved there to where he was able to get that single. Juan Soto... Gets a ground ball, a shortstop. It was an excellent play by Nick Maton to keep this ball into the infield. Gets the force out at second base. But then you have Juan Soto still at first. So with two outs, here comes Kyle Schwarber. And he hits an absolute bomb to the opposite field to make it a 2-1 to one ball game. So maybe if the defensive shift wasn't there on Josh, Josh Harrison, maybe you do get out of that inning without Kyle Schwarber having to come to the plate. 
That's also a possibility there as well. But he makes it a 2-1 to one lead. Zach Eflin losing Starlin Castro. He gets a walk. And then Josh Bell, the very next pitch, hits an absolute bomb to right field. Lands into the second deck. It was a, like over 440 feet or something like that. And he makes it a 4-1 to one lead for the Nationals. And then he eventually gets the four, third out of the inning. So... Not the best inning for Zach Eflin. I think he still was under like 30 pitches, so that was showcasing how aggressive the Nats were during that inning against Eflin. But just offensively, just nothing really going for both teams between the uh, second and the sixth inning. Just lifeless from the offense. You get Phillies going down at least three war batters in a row, just one, two, three innings after one, two, three innings. Zach Eflin settled down a lot. And the umpiring, oh, the God, the umpire behind the plate was awful. The strike zone was so bad. There were so many question marks in this game. You got Trey Turner yelling at the umpire. You got Bryce Harper not being happy with a strikeout. You got Kyle Schwarber arguing with the umpire, and he tosses his helmet onto the ground, and you get that signal from the umpire giving him a fine. So... Yeah, the, the strike zone was, like, very big in today's ball game and was very inconsistent, so I can understand the frustration from a lot of the batters in the plate today. But just both pitchers pitched really good in between those innings, and then you go into that top, that bottom of the sixth inning. And it's a little bit more trouble for Zach Eflin. He gets the first out of the inning, but then Juan Soto gets on with a single. Kyle Schwarber gets on with a single. Starlin Castro gets a chopper down the left field line. Goes off of the tip of Alec Bohm's glove. Maybe he should have made a better play at that, most likely. And it turns into a double, which allows Juan Soto to score on that play, making it a 5-1 to one Nationals lead. But then Zach Eflin gets out of the inning, and that would be the end of the ball game for him. The Phillies get a chance, like a really key chance, in the top of the eighth inning. Brad Miller gets on with a double. Kutch gets on with a walk. So you got two guys on for Gene Segura with no outs. And then Gene Segura lines out to get the first out of the inning. And then in comes a new pitcher, Daniel Hudson, to face Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper got ahead in a count 2-0. And Daniel Hudson was basically just throwing fastballs the entire at-bat. And he eventually got Bryce Harper to sw swing and miss on a full count to strike him out. So Bryce Harper can't come up with the runners in scoring position. Here and comes Reese Hoskins. And then Reese Hoskins grounds out to the third baseman and gets out of the inning for the Nationals. So... There is your chance with runners in scoring position there with no outs. And uh, basically the heart of your order could not get anything done there. So that basically just describes how lifeless the offense was in today's ball game. Bullpen comes in for Zach Eflin actually in the start of the seventh inning. De Los Santos, he got a 1-2-3 inning. And then <laughs> for the Matt Moore actually came in at the bottom of the eighth inning. And actually coming out of the bullpen, Matt Moore has actually been pretty uh, useful which is surprising, so maybe uh, you could utilize Matt Moore as a long inning reliever type of guy. You never know. I'm not. Sure. I'm not. I'm not praying for anything. I'm just like he, he's been actually pretty decent coming out of the bullpen for the Phillies. Then you go into the top of the ninth inning in the uh, bottom, the, the middle part of the order. Alec Bohm with Dubal Herrera and Andrew Knapp can't get anything done. So ba basically, just a boring ball game. The Nash's got all their runs basically in the first and that one run in that sixth inning. Philly's offense was basically lifeless the entire ball game. They had their chance in the eighth inning. They couldn't get it done. It just It's sim as simple as that. They couldn't find a way to hit a Patrick Corbin who has been struggling this year. And you have to get credit to Patrick Corbin because he took advantage of the uh, Phillies tactics today. He pounded the strike zone early, and he got him to swing and miss with off-speed pitches. And that's how he got his job done. If you look at the uh, box score for the pitchers for the Phillies today, Six innings for Zach Eflin, seven hits allowed, five earned runs, two walks, and nine strikeouts with the two home runs allowed in that first inning. So if you take away that first inning, Zach Eflin had a pretty solid ball game. Just sadly, he had that first inning, so that's what affects his ball game there. De Los Santos comes in for that seventh inning, pitches a solid one, two, three. Matt Moore comes in for his eighth inning, pitches a solid one, two, three. They both strike out one each. And if you look at the lineup today, Pretty lifeless to be exact. Andrew McCutcheon goes one for three. He scored the run in that first inning. He also gets a walk in this ballgame as well. Gene Zagura really hasn't had the best series this against the Nationals. He goes over for four. He left three runners stranded on base today. Bryce Harper goes one for four with three strikeouts. He left two runners stranded on base. Reese Hoskins goes over for four, two strikeouts, left four runners on base. Alec Bohm goes one for four, two strikeouts, one runner left on base, and Alec Bohm. I know I keep bringing this up with Alec Bohm. There's just like certain at-bats that he has that just, 
there's like so many pitches that he just leaves right out over the middle of the plate and maybe some swings it looks like he's trying to drive the ball instead of just utilizing what he did last year and just try to get contact try to get line drives try to get on base utilize the entire field and like I said I'm not worried about Alec Bohm he's just going through the sophomore slump he's going through his adjustments he needs to find a way to readjust because pitchers have his book and it's his job to readjust his game to be better. And like I said, I am not worried about him one bit because he showcased what he can actually do. Odupo Herrera gets another hit in this ball game. He goes one for four with two strikeouts. Andrew Knapp goes over four with one strikeout. Nick Maton goes one for three, and Zach Eflin goes over two. And Andrew and uh, Brad Miller, I almost said Andrew Miller, uh, gets on. Gets one hit in this ballgame in a pinch hit situation with a double as well. The Phillies with runners in scoring position in this ballgame go one for seven, and they leave six runners stranded on base. So basically, yeah, not a good not a, not a good afternoon for the offense for the Philadelphia Phillies, and also for JT Remuto. He is not going to travel to Florida to play the Toronto Blue Jays. That still sounds very weird to say, even though the Toronto has been playing in the U.S. since last season. But that's still very weird to say to go down to Florida to play the Toronto Blue Jays. That's just a very odd thing to say. But he won't make that trip down to Florida. He was tested for COVID-19 because he had a fever. He had stomach aches, but he wasn't tested positive. But he's not going to make the trip. And that's what he got to deal with in these situations during a COVID type of season. If you're feeling any type of fever, any type of sick symptoms, you have to be tested for COVID. You have to stay away from the team. So JT is not going to make the trip, and Raphael Marchand was called up from the AAA roster, Lehigh Valley, to be the backup catcher for Andrew Knapp. So they're going to have to deal with an entire series without JT Romuto against the Blue Jays. And if we look into the series against Toronto, tomorrow will be Vince Velasquez going up against Steven Matz. Both Friday and Saturday are 7.30 games. Aaron Nola will be the pitcher on Saturday against a to-be-determined pitcher, so we won't know most likely until either tomorrow or that game day. And then Sunday will be a 107 start. will be Chase Anderson going up against Robbie Ray. So this is another series where the Phillies will be going up against two left-handed pitchers. We've been seeing a lot of left-handers lately, and it's kind of getting annoying. <laughs> but still. So with this loss, the Phillies win the series, and in the standings, they are now 20-18. and 18. They are a game and a half behind the New York Mets, and they're two and a half games up on the Atlanta Braves in a scary situation for Atlanta as Ronald Acuna Jr. leaves the game with an apparent ankle injury. So that's something that they have to look out for, and hopefully it's nothing long-term for him because of how just exciting he is to watch. So... We got the uh, last three games of the road trip coming up. Like I said, I'm not too bothered by this loss. Majority I am just because of how poor the offense was today. I'm more confident that Zach Eflin can bounce back in his next start. And let's see what we can do against the Toronto Blue Jays because they're going to be a very tough lineup. They're a very tough team. They're a young and up-and-coming team. Guys like Vlad Guerrero Jr., guys like Biggio, guys like Bo Bichette. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a difficult series going to be a very difficult series for the Phillies so it's gonna be a tough one they're gonna to have to find a way to battle you got Aaron Noble on Saturday but then you're also facing up with your maybe your two bottom guys in the rotation in Vince Velasquez and Chase Anderson so we really have to expect those guys to step up and I know Vince Velasquez has had a pretty solid past two starts am I really expecting much from him still probably not but hey he's been surprising me as of these last two starts so Leave an open mind, I guess, going into tomorrow. So, what are your thoughts on this video, everyone? What are your thoughts on this Phillies game, their offensive performance, the performance by Zach Eflin? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. So, don't forget to leave them down there. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the so the uh, Painted Lines, which I'm a part of. almost forgot what I was going to say there. Their links will be in the description below. Don't forget to check out the links to the Florida Podcast Merchandise website. And the link for Flyers Nitty Gritty, they will be down in the description below. We'll also be doing a Flyered Up podcast live stream tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. with Flyers beat writer Charlie O'Connor from The Athletic. So definitely check out for that tomorrow morning. If you're going to be awake, you're definitely going to need that coffee. So definitely stay tuned for that. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, everyone. And I will see you next time.